Sponsored by Squarespace. The Roden tier list. The Cretaceous Bowers hey. patch nerfed a lot of the top builds, but one of the builds that managed to get through unscathed was the Rodent. They survived by using a weak but versatile and intelligent His generalist audio, uh, playstyle. Balancing was a lot worse but with the dinosaurs out of the way, they began to diversify into a bunch of different niches and incorporate a wide variety of different strategies into their playstyles. Some of them were kind of janky to be honest, but many of them have stood the test of time to become a mainstay <clears throat> of the current meta. Rodents all have one attribute in common, their signature incisor or teeth, which, while not very useful in combat, can deal severe damage to structures. Making the most of this ability is a core component of rodent gameplay. Rodents are on the weaker side when it comes to combat, and most stick to the evasive generalist strategy, relying on their intelligence stat and special abilities to remain competitive. Mastering this type of gameplay is difficult, but luckily their relatively short spawn time helps mitigate this challenge. Even though their bread and butter moveset is pretty consistent, there are several Super unique fine. builds that stand out as particularly viable, so let's get into the tier list now. So bottom of the tier list is the Lemming, but not for the reason you might think. Lemon. It's a common misconception that Lemmings have such a low intelligence stat that the only thing they're good at is getting a big group together, jumping off the stage, and uninstalling. This isn't true, although to be honest, if you're manning the Lemming, you might be better off uninstalling. But anyways, those Twitch clips are fake, don't be fooled. The actual Lemming playstyle is only slightly more effective though. It revolves entirely around hoping that the Blizzard World event happens and creates the deep snow biome. If it happens, Lemmings can use it as cover and build extensive tunnel networks through the snow. But if not, Lemmings have zero defensive options and end up getting bodied left and right to the point where their player base drops hard until the next big snowfall. As we all know, rising global temperatures are making snow biomes disappear across many servers. And so this already pretty unviable strategy is becoming even less viable as the meta progresses towards getting wetter and more tropical. Moving on up the tier list, we have the Capybara. The Capybara is at an awkward place in the meta, in that it hasn't quite spent enough evolution points to actually get much use out of its bulkiness. This is because, unfortunately, their home server is the Amazon Rainforest, Oof. which is also the home server of many of the most powerful S-tier predators in the game, such as the Harpy Eagle, Cayman, and Jaguar, all of which have no problem dealing enough damage to bring down a Capybara. Their main method of defense is hiding underwater, which works against aerial builds like the Harpy Eagle, but is a pretty terrible strategy against the vast majority of predators in the rainforest. Anacondas, jaguars, and caimans all thrive in the aquatic biome, and hiding underwater won't do you any good against them. To move up in viability, I recommend boosting your defensive stats even further, or spend some evolution points unlocking at least some sort of solid damage dealing ability. Also in D tier, I'm placing the Naked Mole Rat. <laughs> the Naked Mole Rat is unique in that it's the only mammal to ever unlock a new social ability. But to be honest, as cool as that is, the Naked Mole Rat uses it quite poorly and doesn't really benefit much from implementing RTS tactics sweet into its gameplay. Potato. Yes, Naked Mole Rats have a queen, workers, and drones, just like you social insects. But the only thing that makes you sociality such an unbelievably strong strategy is that it enables a group of individuals to achieve things that would be impossible alone, like taking down a huge boss, traversing a huge barrier, or surviving a catastrophe. You never see Naked Mole Rats doing something like this. It kind of makes sense why, while other eusocial creatures live on almost every single terrestrial server, naked mole rats are confined to just a small area in Africa. Sure, they do have the coveted cancer resistance ability, but spending points to unlock an extremely rare power that benefits the individual makes no sense when playing as a eusocial colony. Your abilities should serve the colony, not the colony's units. The one impressive thing they do achieve is creating a large base, but there are other rodents who do this better like the next contender on this list. Jumping up to C tier, we have the Beaver, one of the most well-known builder classes in the entire game. This is where it becomes important that a rodent's teeth deal high damage the to tree the looks fake. Beavers have iron hey, there's the beaver. teeth that can be used to bring down it wasn't trees. The tree this is an option, by one. the way. Like all rodents, their teeth have a passive regeneration ability that mitigates loss of durability. But this also means that if they don't continuously use them, they'll eventually become overgrown That's and deal terrifying. damage to the user. Anyways, the resources they gather are used to construct dams in rivers. This serves as their home base and main method of defense. 
Once fully completed, it works great, but the strategy does have its drawbacks that keep the beaver out of the higher tiers. For one, beavers are very vulnerable while their dam is still under construction. They have no good method of defense if they're caught in the open. Even their iron teeth don't deal enough damage to truly deter a predator. And carrying large amounts of mats through the woods makes stealth very difficult to maintain. Beavers also don't have much recourse if the river their base is located in freezes and becomes uninhabitable, as they only get a mobility bonus in liquid water. In B tier we've got the prairie dog, the rodent that does social play the right way. Like lemmings, they create elaborate tunnel systems, but unlike lemmings, they do it in the ground, which is permanent, instead of the snow, which is transitory. They aren't eusocial, each prairie dog is an individual player with free control. But they do all work together to protect each other, by keeping watch and using team chat to warn each other when a carnivore player is nearby. They have no other defensive abilities, but somehow this strategy makes the matchup nearly impossible for builds like the coyote and hawk to actually catch them. It doesn't do the greatest job against stealth though, so owls and snakes can still be problematic for them. Also in B tier we have the ultimate jack of all trades for the low weight class meta, the rat. Rats don't have any single oppressive moves or abilities, but their high intelligence stat makes them extremely adaptable, and has let them establish a foothold in basically every single That's server funny. in the game. Their ability to function in a wide variety of diverse situations makes them a nightmare for new players to deal with and their rodent teeth allow them to bypass barriers that would be impassable for most builds. Rats rose to popularity in the meta because of their ability to stow away on the ships humans used for fast travel, and then wreak havoc on islands that they stopped at. Island metas are always more casual, and the players there tend to have a lot less matchup experience than mainland builds, and so they are easily defeated by experienced and adaptable invasive builds like rats. Rats are a solid choice for any experienced player, because while they have no downright overpowered abilities, their highly versatile playstyle can be a nightmare in the right hands. This is why you see so many rat mains in the Rata outside Tui. Hall of Fame. In A tier, George we have a little. build very similar no. to the rat, but with higher mobility and better resource gathering skills, the squirrel. Squirrels are some of the best arboreal builds in the game, having the highest arboreal movement bonus of all time. This enables them to evade attacks with ease and lets them access loot that's normally tough to reach without the flight ability. But beyond that, they also have a uniquely strong matchup against humans. I've got Outside's best lore specialist here to tell you about it. Hey guys, so whether you expected it or not, squirrels are one of modern man's greatest enemies. They can chew through electrical wires and cables with ease and they love doing it, which makes squirrels the most frequent cause of power outages in America. They're capable of infiltrating power stations by tunneling beneath them, and then they'll bypass plastic animal guards with ease, squeeze through small spaces, Why, and though? chew through whatever wire insulation they come across. Just one single squirrel in 2015 knocked out a substation in San Francisco that shut down power to 40 35,000 homes. So if you want to learn more about what these ferocious little creatures are capable of, come and check out my video next after this one. Now the top tier rodent is unique in that it's the Why only purely like, defensive uh, base wires. build I've ever rated as top tier. The Porcupine, a build with such a high defense level that even the most powerful predators in the game have terrible matchups against it. The Quill ability deals damage to any player whose attacks make contact. This is just hilariously effective against builds that rely on the move Bite or Swipe to deal damage. While the initial damage from Quills isn't terribly high, oh my every subsequent God. Bite or Swipe attempt while the Quills are still embedded deals higher and higher damage. Meaning that unless you have a support class that can remove the Quills, they can they be hate a death it. sentence. I've had to do that a couple they have times. remarkably high lifespans because of this. So if you're looking to play as a class that can do basically whatever it wants without worrying about attacks from most of the cast, Porcupine is your best bet. You're not gonna mention cars? The only things that can really pose a threat to them are disjointed weapons and projectiles. And cars. But overall, Porcupines are one of the most well-protected builds of all time. Normally, I'd recommend maybe relocating some of their defensive stats towards intelligence. But in this case, it seems that their mid-level intelligence, low mobility, and low stealth do the job just fine. In a lot of ways, having a high intelligence stat is crucial to surviving in the current meta. But for some things, having a high level of experience is no longer required. Like, for example, web design. Nice. 